Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Angel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. For latest updates, you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Mania. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. So, let's begin. This video is a continuation of the previous video where we discussed the first three stages of gingivitis. In this video, we will talk about the fourth stage of gingivitis, known as the advanced lesion or the stage of periodontal breakdown or simply periodontitis. So let's begin. Periodontitis, which is an inflammation of the supporting tissues of the teeth, is a disease originating from the gingival tissue which, if left untreated, results in penetration of inflammation to the deeper tissues, causing bone resorption and eventually tooth loss. Let's zoom in this area and look at the changes occurring in periodontitis. In this advanced lesion, the destruction of collagen fibers further extends into the periodontal ligament and the alveolar bone. The junctional epithelium migrates apically to fill the collagen depleted areas. Hence, a periodontal pocket is formed which is lined by the pocket epithelium. This deepened periodontal pocket is a great space for further plaque accumulation which is not reachable with normal oral hygiene measures such as tooth brushing. Hence the deepened pocket becomes a favorable environment for a variety of pathogenic bacteria involved in periodontitis. The neutrophils predominate in the junctional epithelium and within the periodontal pocket. However, macrophages and B and T lymphocytes dominate in the underlying connective tissue. The B lymphocytes mature into plasma cells to produce antibodies which then work along with the complement system to kill bacteria that finally end up destructing normal periodontal tissues. The tissue destruction in periodontitis results from two main sources. These are the inflammatory mediators derived from subgingival microbes and those derived from the host immune response. Although the presence of bacteria within the dental plaque is important to initiate an inflammatory response, but majority of tissue destruction results from the severe immune response of the host itself. Let's state a few points on these immune-related inflammatory mediators in order to understand the pathophysiology of periodontitis. The inflammatory mediators related to an individual's immune system and are involved in the periodontal breakdown are the matrix metalloproteins or MMPs, prostanoids, the most important of which are the PGE2 or prostaglandin E2 and cytokines. Matrix metalloproteins or MMPs are proteolytic enzymes or collagenases that degrade collagen fibers of the periodontium. In this advanced lesion, these MMPs are produced by osteoclasts and fibroblasts. PGE2 is a lipid compound that is primarily derived from plasma membranes of most cells significantly by the macrophages and fibroblasts in periodontal disease. PGE2 causes vasodilation and induces cytokine production from a variety of cells. It also results in the induction of MMPs and causes osteoclastic bone resorption by stimulating macrophages to turn them into osteoclasts which are bone resorbing cells. The synthesis of PGE2 is upregulated by interleukin 1 beta and TNF alpha. Interleukin 1 beta and TNF alpha are the most important cytokines produced mainly by T lymphocytes and macrophages. They are the key inflammatory mediators in periodontal disease. They act as messengers and transmit signals from one cell to the other. They also aid in the further recruitment of immune cells in the area of insult. In short, interleukin 1 beta and TNF alpha are the most important cytokines involved in periodontal disease.
Although neither interleukin-1 beta nor TNF-alpha is directly involved in the stimulation of bone resorption, they indirectly promote bone destruction by stimulating sustained inflammation of the periodontal tissues. TNF-alpha and interleukin-1 beta causes vasodilation, activates endothelial cells to increase the recruitment of immune cells, increase the production of some other chemokines, participate in the activation of neutrophils, and stimulate the secretion and tissue activation of PGE2 and MMPs. Another most important system which is worth mentioning here and is a key system for controlling bone turnover is the receptor activator of nuclear factor and osteoprotegrin system or the RANK and OPG system. RANK is a cell surface receptor expressed by osteoclast progenitor cells as well as by mature osteoclasts. Rank L is a ligand that binds to rank and is expressed by T cells, osteoblasts, and fibroblasts. The binding of rank L to rank results in differentiation and activation of osteoclastic progenitor cells into mature osteoclasts and thus causes bone resorption. Another ligand that binds to rank is OPG or osteoprotegrin, produced by osteoblasts and fibroblasts. OPG inhibits the differentiation of osteoclasts. Thus, rank L and OPG are both cytokines that bind to rank receptor and that result in cellular responses in opposite ways. Where rank L promotes the activation and differentiation of osteoclasts, OPG, however, inhibits osteoclastic maturation and their activation. In individuals with periodontitis, elevated levels of pro inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin 1 beta and TNF alpha and increasing numbers of infiltrating T cells result in the activation of osteoclasts via rank, which results in alveolar bone loss. PGE2 also induces osteoblasts to secrete more rank L. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please do hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon to get notified on each upcoming video. If you have got any questions or suggestions, you may just write them down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.